Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to a brand new edition of Geek to Me Radio. Today, we have the legendary Roy Thomas, comic book creator and writer of so many different characters. We've talked about him, about his career. After that, we'll be live with Patrick Reynolds talking about a brand new comic you can get this weekend at New Comic Book Day from Image, Bloodstained Teeth, all that and more. Stand by. We're talking TV, comics and movies, and video games. Star Trek from Star Wars will try to explain There are 12 doctors for Hogwarts houses on ring rolls and more To be the greatest Pokemon master You must catch them all You must catch them all Try to catch them all Gotta catch If you're driving around the greater St. Louis area tonight listening to us on the Big 550 KTRS, hello to you and thank you for listening. If you're streaming us out there in the world via the website or the app, hello to you as well. And of course, we're back with video this week. So if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Instagram, hello to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and tuning in each week. Um, I did promise a geek trivia to start everything off with. And it's appropriate that we've got this particular uh, person on because he's obviously written some of these characters. He created so many great characters. We've got Roy Thomas, an interview with him. We're supposed to have a gentleman who wrote a book about Betty White, but we had a little connection problem, couldn't quite get a hold of him. So luckily, we're going to pivot. We've got something else ready. So this is a great interview that I did last year. I haven't had a chance to air it yet. And it's the great Roy Thomas who created so many characters that we're loving right now. Moon Knight, Morbius, he oversaw them, wrote them, or helped co-create them. Uh, Co-creator Wolverine, he basically got Marvel to bring on Star Wars, which basically kept Star Wars from, or I should say, kept Marvel from going bankrupt. So a lot of cool stories to talk about with Roy Thomas. But first, for a trivia question, uh, we've got a prize pack from our partners at Kokomo Toys in Kokomo, Indiana. And we put a tweet out, so you see the picture of all the stuff we've got to give away. It's one of the Marvel Eternals, Marvel Legends figures. So the question is this, and you can either text it on the KTRS text lines at 84126, or you can also just call us on the KTRS hotline, 314-931-5877. First person to give the correct answer gets that prize pack. And of course, since it's an Eternals prize pack, we'll go, uh, we'll keep it simple, Name the actor who played the character Cersei in the Eternals movie that just came out from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What is the name of the actor who played Cersei in the Eternals from Marvel? First person to correctly text or call with the answer to that will get that Kokomo Toys prize pack. And with that said, let's get to our interview as I change screens here, nimble fingered as always, and here we go. Legend, the man Roy Thomas about all of this. Uh, so much to talk about, and we'll try to get through some of it here. So we'll start right out. Uh, you're a Missouri boy as well. It's always nice to see. Are you from Missouri? I am well, St. Louis, yeah. Here, you know, so it made me feel that you know, they aren't from Kansas City, they moved here or whatever. But yeah, I was born in Jackson, Missouri, which is the county seat of Cape Girardeau County, like opposite. And I never got to Kansas City in my entire life really? until after I'd moved to New York. When I went to Mexico and drove back through, the only time I went west, I drove back through Joplin yeah. and Springfield. But I never got to uh, Kansas City. I've never been to Hannibal, I don't think I can remember. Maybe once in past. <laughs> so they just days. had a Comic-Con in Hannibal in April. We could have had you there, too. Yeah, we'll I could have been, yeah. Make the tour. Mark Twain. Especially now that you've got your own day. Roy Thomas Day was officially declared. Well, and, uh, that was, that's, yeah, that's... <laughs> That and a dime will get you a Xerox of a cup of coffee. You know? Well, I was going to say, at least in Jackson, Missouri, <laughs> no, it should was, get you more than no, a cup of coffee. No, no, no. I was, I, was I was very pleased. I have a couple, few friends back there. Most of the people I know have either passed on or they've moved out or whatever, you know, most. But there, I still have a few few friends from high school, not not my very closest friends, but, but people, very and very nice people. It's like here, very nice people. Yeah. And 
Midwesterners are, are Midwesterners, I think, generally speaking, you know, very good people. They avoid a lot of the excesses, especially New York. New Yorkers would drive me crazy, and probably right. vice versa. Right. You know? <laughs> And kind of just hitting some of your career highlights, uh, starting out DC Comics with Mort Weisinger. Eight um, days. That was that, that maybe <laughs> one of the 40 shortest. Years, I, don't know. I was gonna say, depending on how you look at that, yeah, because you you started there, bounced to Marvel, but I loved your run on All Star Squadron. Yeah, that, that was, was such my a favorite. Great. That was my favorite comic book to write of all time. Conan would be second, and yeah. maybe Avengers third, but the and Invaders not too far down the line. But All Star Squadron, even you know, and of course even the Young Girl starts with it, but especially the All Star Squadron was '67 or so issues, a few annuals, etc. If if there was one comic, even more than Conan, all those those two together, that I could have been writing from that day to this without, and I would never probably never have left, would have been All Star Squadron. And by now we might even be up to 1942 in the kind. I know. Work our way <laughs> yeah, through the, 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 the was whole going. 40s there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was my idea. And Infinity Inc. too, you did with Jerry Ordway, which was mm -hmm. another great series. Was that Jerry Ordway and Mike Macklin? He gets that's right. He gets left off, but he actually did a lot of those designs. He and Jerry were working together, and a lot of the original penciling for what the character looked like was Macklin, who was supposed to ink it. Uh, I mean, start penciling mm -hmm. it, but then he decided he was better off inking it uh, after and so forth. And so, but but Macklin was just as much as he and Ordway were basically sort of part equal partners time. With, so I hate it when it says Roy Thomas and Jerry Arden. I mean, Dan worked on it in Farmway, but that was different. Sure. Her name wasn't on it. But Mike's, you know, deserves to be up there just as much as Jerry's, and I know Jerry would say the same. And Dan did get credit for the Wonder Woman eventually, yeah, which was... Yeah, she eventually uh, got credit in Infinity, but all the characters are using now on Star Girls, the, the son of the, 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 the second Hour Man, Wildcat, Dr. Midnight, Jade. These are all, uh, along with Jerry and, and Mike uh, sometime earlier or later, uh, they were, they're all Dan's co-creations, too. But then, you know, any check comes to me, she gets. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> and that's got to be so gratifying to see, because I, I had a list. There's so many yeah. well, it's people you co-created. and It's not gratifying. I, I, I'm happy that Jeff Johns has done this in Stargirl. And, you know, I'm pleased that I accept what he's done. He's taken a little tiny bit, and he's done something different with it. And I understand that and all. Uh, and I'll like Jade as soon as she turns green. I mean, I, you know, and everything. <laughs> right. she should be able to turn green, you know. Uh, she always did when the, when she was a white girl. She should be able to. She turned green, and when she so she should turn green now in the. Uh, so as soon as she does that, I'll applaud. And I I really think that uh, Macklin Ardway and I should have some sort of credit on the show. I would agree. Uh, but other than that, I got no complaints about it at all. And They're also, even using Artemis and that I you know that we co-created yeah. uh, and so forth and a few others. A bunch of the villains, the son of Icicle. They used Hazard in another show and or Obsidian. Right. It's weird. The whole Infinity cast. And even Dragon King, they dragged out I know, from, that was... from an issue, a single issue of All-Star <laughs> Squadron. I don't know where they got that from. That's when they dig into the nooks and crannies. That's when you, you can tell they're a fan if they're putting yeah. that much effort but into the they're, series. They're, like, they're not, I wouldn't have maybe, you know, I was sort of only halfway interested because I, I like Stargirl. Okay, but it's it's well done. It's not the kind of thing I'd ordinarily watch, except I want to see what they do with my characters. It's right. a well done show and see Stripesy there and everything kind of like that. But... You know, but when they suddenly are mentioning uh, per, what happened to Per Degaton, I mean, to see Per, De per Degaton's name on a what about right. a network <laughs> right. show, that's something as a kid <laughs> in six, seven or yeah. years old, and ninth, when I pronounced it Decaton, because I didn't know, you know, how would you know what, how it's pronounced? We still don't really know. I talked to John Broon, who wrote the story. He had no idea where the name <laughs> Per Degaton came from or, or how it was pronounced or anything, even though he wrote the, the story about it. And, I can't tell you how many times I've mispronounced adamantium growing up, too. So. Yeah, well, I, all through my life, until I was an adult, I always said, because I, I never saw the old serial, I always said Shazam. I didn't know it was Shazam, although that makes sense. And I always called him the Submariner. I never knew it was Submariner. Same, Because yes. Submariner was a real term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I'd probably heard that. So, you know, you just don't know if you don't see, if you don't hear it anywhere else. And again, switching back to Marvel, again, a lot of characters you created and co-created. Mm -hmm. uh, we just saw Vision pop up in Vision and Scarlet yeah. Witch, obviously. Um, what If, which I, I have both those volumes, I've poured over them so many times. Yeah. You basically brought that yeah. to fruition. Yeah. And now to yeah. see it kind of coming yeah. on a big screen yeah. or small the, screen. Yeah, the guys at Marvel, it was a hard, I, I've been working with the ex executive of Marvel because I really felt I should have a credit on there. And the, yeah. and, they, and the guy I work with agreed, but he says it's so hard to talk them into it because it isn't a character. You know, it says they, they, and they can't understand that I could create a concept as opposed to a character. You know, huh. as a matter of fact, if, if there is, if there's one, if there is one thing, or one of only a handful of things that I actually created, and which no artist really deserves credit for, not if they want to give it to him, fine. More than anything, it would be what if, because that didn't owe to Stan only in the sense that I took a expression he used, but he had nothing to do with the idea of doing it. The artist 
didn't matter because the artist changed every right. issue. It was just just my just like the name Adamantium. You know, no Barry Smith goes he was he he never drew anything that looked like Adamantium. It was, you know, <laughs> you know right, yeah. he was just drawing a metal. You know, and everything. And uh, but most of the things, of course, and, and a few characters I that I actually drew the first pictures of, like the first four original members of the Squadron Sinister mm -hmm. or Union Jack. You know, and so that I actually drew the first pictures of. But mostly, of course, I was co-creating with an artist, either leaving the visual part to them or giving them a general idea and letting them go. And maybe I'd change it a little when I came back. But, you know, I, I was very much a collaborator and wanted to give the artists their, their freedom. And it's great that the movies and the TV shows are crediting the creators in the, the special yeah, thanks. We're, we're all in a little, you know, a little uh, box at the end. And I, you know, I... I, I kind of, you know, wanted to get a little individual credit. They, I mean, even Steve Englehart has a couple of individual credits on things, Star and so forth. There's a few places where, you know, uh, I should get an individual credit or, or with, say, the artist like Buscema or somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, should have been something maybe on Ultron, you know, uh, provision on Ultron, you know, after all, he's in the name of the movie. But, you know, these are minor things, and it's just, a, and I figure, you know, the main thing is th the names are on there, you know. I was always telling the Marvel lawyers for years, when I was working on depositions on there and so forth, just give people a little credit, a little money, and they'll be your big boosters instead of sure. no lawsuits. Yeah. Of course, I'm telling that the lawyers, they're the people who are making money. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But, but Marvel itself <laughs> finally saw that, especially after Disney bought them, I think. The Disney people probably, this is guess, nobody's ever told me this, probably looked and said, my God, we got a lousy paper trail here, <laughs> you know, to, to prove that these people did, you know, that they, these people signed work for hire because we did. Right. But you know, you, they'd been lost, declared illegal. They had something signed in the late seventies. They seemed to have lost all those papers. The administration back in New York. So you know, but I was willing to sign it again because I knew what I'd done. You know, some people, maybe they remember, maybe they don't. But I was just never going to sue. I don't have the inclination to sue. And my wife says, I, you know, I have to have a divorce lawyer at the same time if I got involved in it. She saw what happened to people like my friend Gary Friedrich. And, yeah. You know, you know yeah. it just it kind of, you know, it was. It, I could see his case, you know, to a certain extent, but at the same time, you know, he, it, it, you know, it, 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 these lawsuits take over your life. And yeah, absolutely. So forth, you know. But now, now I think it's it's gotten better and so forth. I'm not one of the squeaky wheels like Starlin's going to complain. I'm I'm happy with everything <laughs> and so you know, if or if I'm unhappy with something, I see. Well, you know, nobody's ever always happy with everything. You know, there's sure. always, there's always something. But I'm pretty happy with my relationship with the two companies except for the fact they don't really give me that much original work and right but that's a nice. different department yeah exactly <laughs> and with the, all the movies I couldn't and sell TVs, any fewer books than they do that's true <laughs> yeah at this point you really no kidding no kidding and it, just to barely some of the books I'm not talking about but some of the comic books that are there is coming to come out I, I practically sell as many copies with alter ego <laughs> and that, and that exactly doesn't make right, yeah. that doesn't make me a living that's just yeah, a no hobby kidding. you know and so when you're do you still keep up with like are you still reading some of the current stuff from either I the big two I well, I pick up a couple of things here and there, or they send me something, you know, and so forth, and they look fine. It's not my kind of, you know, comic anymore, but I, I basically stopped reading comics by the end of the 70s. Oh, you know, really? Real new ones. Okay. I mean, I'd still pick up a few here and there. And like, I didn't buy a Conan book comic for the entire 80s when I wasn't really? writing. Really? Wow. Huh. Then, I had to go, then I went back and bought all the ones I'd missed when I started writing it again. Right. But otherwise, I would never, because I have interested in reading Robert E. Howard, and I'm interested in writing Conan. Nothing else. Sure, that <laughs> makes know, sense. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the other books weren't good, drawn well, written well. In some cases, they probably were, and and so you know. But uh, you know, they just I, I wasn't interested in them. And it's probably better for I, I would assume your overall mental health and well-being is to once you're done with the project, you kind of let it go rather than obsess over how yeah, it's being done now. If I did, I'd just say you know they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that, or or worse yet, I might see something that I like and say oh they're they're better than I. <laughs> that's <laughs> you know, true too. That's no good either. <laughs> you know, so it's just best to keep out of it, let them go, because I wasn't going to complain, because I didn't own Conan. He wasn't my character. Right. And everything, you know. Uh, you know, I'd like to do a little more Conan. They've had me do a little. I'd like to do more. I, you know, I'd like to do a Conan book a month somewhere. Yeah. I've given them a few ideas for individual different series I could do. It wouldn't interfere with any continuity, but that's up to them. Luckily, you know, uh, I don't need them. Right. They don't exactly. need me. Yeah. I don't need them. So, and I'm very happy with I get what I get from them. I do some stuff for them, introductions and the occasional comic, you know, and so forth. I'd like to do more, a little more for Marvel or DC or whatever. But on the other hand, I mean, I'm going to be 81 years old in a few months. It's not, if I have to write one more lousy comic book, <laughs> you know, in order to to uh, secure whatever tiny niche I have in the history of comics, it's already too late That's for me. That's a very good point. Yeah, <laughs> I've either done it or I haven't. Did, right. really, did Stan really need anything after 1974 or so in order to, 
you know, to have For done him, what yeah. he did. Did Elvis need to do anything after the first year of uh, or two of his career? Nothing. Yeah. You know? Did Louis Armstrong need to do anything more after the twenties? Not really. But you do it because you love it. You mentioned Alter Ego, for yeah, example. Yeah. And you, you, as a little kid, you were self-publishing and writing your own comic books and for friends Start, and family. Yeah, I've so got, I've got my first one that was maybe seven to eight years old. It was it was like fifty pages, and the, the last page got lost. But I still got it somewhere at home. I haven't seen it in a few years, but it's there. And my mother <laughs> saved is the only reason I have it. But you know, all through that period for the next several years, I was writing, drawing my own comics, ambitious comics. Some of them were, one was a JSA type group, mm -hmm. and it was like a 50 or 60 page story. I mean, you know, longer than the ones I was reading. Wow. It's, it's just, uh, you know, I just write and draw the stuff. And you, but as far as the art goes, you seem like more of a writer. Yeah. More, so it, it was the, obviously at that time, at that age, the art was a necessity as you doing the book yourself. But it, with all the artists you've worked on, do you feel like, and again, I'm not trying to make you pick a favorite, but who do you feel best captured, like you had more simpatical yeah. relationship with? And we're going to get Roy Thomas's answer to who was his favorite artist to work with during his career. We'll talk about that. We'll talk more with Roy Thomas. And then later on, we're going to talk with artist Patrick Reynolds about his brand new comic from Image Comics, Bloodstained Teeth. Love the concept. You will, too. All that and more, you're listening to Geek Me Radio right here on the Big 550 KTRS. For a record with sound effects, action figures sold separately. Let's hear He-Man, Skeletor, and the Point Dread story. I, Skeletor, will finally defeat He-Man. I'll use the talent fighter to stop Skeletor. In a flash, He-Man's hurled through space and time. Surrender to the power of Point Dread's talent fighter. You win, He-Man, but I'll be back. <laughs> Point Dread and the Talon Fighter with record and storybook. You have to put it together. Action figures sold separately from Mattel. You hipster lolly. I like you, funny baby. Mr. Potato Head Family. New from Hasbro Preschool. It's going to look so pretty, my friend Becky. There. Your hair is so soft. As soon as I dress you, we'll be all ready to go out. Hi! 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 This is my friend Jenny. I love to play with my friend Mandy. Yes, fun! Yes! My friend Becky, my friend Mandy, my friend Jenny. Each sold separately by Fisher Price. Be careful! This place is crawling with Biker Scouts! Don't worry, they don't match for us, you are! From Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection, New Wicked W. Warwick and Princess Nisa, each sold separately. Quiet, Nisa, here comes a Biker Scout! Ayala! Let's go! Yibanga! He's gaining on us! Aye! Head for the forest! <laughs> Close call! Attention, maggots! This is Sergeant Slaughter from WWE and G.I. Joe! The real American hero. And you're listening to Geek to Me. Don't touch that dial, and that's an order. Sergeant Slaughter is one of the many people at Planet Comic Con this weekend. If you are listening to the show right now, maybe you're on your way back from Planet Comic Con and you're checking out the show. Hello. Hope you had a great weekend. A uh, lot of very cool celebrities there. We got to meet Susan Eisenberg once again. Uh, she's always delightful to see. Marie Canals Barrera, Phil Lamar, Brandon Routh, Ralph Macchio, Sergeant Slaughter, obviously. Uh, a bunch of great talent there, and we have a great interview that will be coming up soon with Jess McKellen from Legends of Tomorrow, all talking about how you can help get that show renewed. The, uh, the deadline evidently is coming up very quick, so look for that interview to be coming up here very soon on the Big 550 KTRS on geek to me Radio. Speaking of geek to me Radio, this show would not be possible without the support of our premier sponsor, and that, of course, is the Greater St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm sure if you're a longtime listener, you'll know the website before I even say it, discoverstcharles.com. If you're brand new and you've not heard the show before, uh, you want to check out discoverstcharles.com. Plan your trip, whether you're listening from out of town, if you're in the greater St. Louis, St. Charles area and just haven't been over there for a while, there's always something new popping up, be it a new restaurant or a new shop or just something new going on, one of their festivals. They've got a great music festival coming up here in June. You can check that out as well. And, of course, uh, they've got their big festivals going on during Halloween and Christmas, Legends and Lanterns coming up in Halloween, which is right around the corner, it feels like, with the weather now getting warmer once again. And great places to eat. Great places to shop, very cool things to check out. And like I said, you always find something new. That's one of the 
beauty of things about St. Charles is there's right around, you'll turn a corner. I didn't realize that was there. So go exploring, get out. The weather's nice and go look around and uh, have some great food, have some fun. If you're out of town, lots of great places to stay. You can plan your entire trip, but start at the website, discoverstcharles.com. That's discoverstcharles.com. Click on the events tab. Plan your trip around one of the upcoming things that are happening in St. Charles. You will not be disappointed. And if you've uh, visited before, visit again. You'll see something new each time. Once again, the website discoverstcharles.com. As we always say, it's an historically good time. Chatting with legendary comic creator Roy Thomas. And when we took that last break, we'd asked him about, with all the artists he's worked with throughout his career, if he had particularly a favorite one. Well, I, there are several people at various times. Uh, John Buscema was probably as good a collaborator as I ever had and everything because he could draw anything. Yeah. Wonderful, 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 marvelous artist. You know, almost as good as he thinks he is. He's great. <laughs> he's great. If Neil's watching, well. <laughs> he's, great, he's great. You know, he really, I'm a big fan of Neil's. You know, and, and he, he likes my stuff okay. We just disagree about things we did. Sure. But I, I love to work with him. Barry Smith, before he became yes. Barry Windsor Smith, yeah. I, you know, we had a great relationship. We worked on Conan and so forth. And before he felt he had a grudge against everybody at Marvel, you know. Um, uh, Gil Kane was a, was a favorite, you know, collaborator and, yeah. and a, a guy that I love to talk comics with because, you know, all these guys didn't really talk about the philosophy. But Gil was a guy who really thought about what he was doing, an autodidact and so forth. And yeah. so he and I got along pretty well. And, but, you know, other people, too. I mean, even the, you know, some lesser artists, just everybody. I had so many different good people I worked with. I had this 10, 20, 30 of them, you know, Cole yeah. and, my God, the little oh, tiny yeah. bit I got to do for me, I'm sorry I didn't get to do more. Marie Severin was great in a lot of areas. I mean, so many yeah. good people, Ardway at, and Buckley at, uh, at DC yeah, and yeah. other people. Todd McFarlane, when he came aboard for a year, you know, I sort of right. helped him get his start, although it was Dan who talked me into using him, really. Hopefully Todd still sends you a Christmas card or something as a thank you or No, no, not really. <laughs> but he should. He's, he's up there with his baseballs, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, he's got his baseball collection now. Yeah. But you've got all these different people you've worked with, all these different characters you've created or co-created. When you see the casting up on the big screen, is there ever one that was that you particularly helped create or co-create? Do you see the casting like that is perfect? I wouldn't have thought of it, that's well, perfect casting. Yeah, even though I wasn't wild about the exact metal structure of the face, uh, the Ultron stuff, especially James and the, the James Spader, wasn't exactly the way I saw it, but I thought what Josh Whedon did with him and the vision was a good realization and you know riff on what I had had, had in mind, and I think that was just that was wonderful. That's as good as it gets, and. Uh, uh, Jer when uh, Jared Leto, I hadn't seen the movie, but Jared Leto made up as Morbius. You know, you couldn't get any closer to what I had in mind there. If you try, there's no way to get any closer yeah. to, what, to what Gil and I had in mind. Yeah. And uh, but and, you know, the others are basically okay. But the Vision and Ultron and uh, uh, Leto, you know, the, that's about as good as it gets. Of course, I enjoy everything when they do the things that aren't what I did, like what they did with Red Guardian and Black Widow. It was, yes. it was funny. Yeah. He turned into a father figure, and he's overweight. He's got his beard, <laughs> and he's got almost comedy relief. But that was very good. I, I think that movie was better than you know, the critics wanted to give it you know, uh, credit for in a lot of cases. I enjoyed it. I said it knocked Ant-Man out of my top movie. five favorite Not Marvel a great movies. movie, but a good movie. Yeah. Was, and the idea that it was a bad movie or something, I don't know what they're looking for, but I, I have the feeling that critics, a lot of critics are really unhappy that they have to like or try to understand Marvel movies, they can't really get with them. And they're just looking for an excuse to not like them because they're not exactly what they want. But of course, you know, if I go see a hip hop movie, there's no way I'm probably gonna like it. So it, you know, so I have to experiment with it. It has to be gone on its own terms and for its own audience because it's never gonna get to me. Sure. I don't consider that music. Right, yeah, know? yeah. And, but if somebody likes it, fine, you know, and everything. I just express it, I understand that there's talent involved, but it isn't talent that reaches me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's not not everything is just, for everybody. Just like, just like the comics that are done now are really not aimed at, at me in a lot of ways, but I can still see there's a lot of talent behind them. They're not better than we were. Uh, they're not worse than we were. <laughs> just, the, just different. Just yeah. The same guys stumbling in the field, doing the best they can. Right. And uh, talking about Stan Lee. Yeah. Um, well, I always do, it seems. <laughs> I, yeah, he's uh, like you were his heir apparent, his successor. Yeah, more or um, less. 
with, uh, you wrote a book about Stanley, yeah. and then several people, Danny Fingroth did a really nice book, uh, book, Peter David and Colleen Doran. Abraham yeah. Reisman wrote one, which was not as flattering, and John's been great about getting your word out there. You mm -hmm. did not feel yeah. that was deserved, yeah. the criticism well, there's at a all. Well, there's a lot of stuff that in, in the book that is as good as history, but no, his attitude is so, so warped, it's almost uh, intellectually dishonest. Hmm. You know, but in between there, if you read in between the lines and, and so forth, you could learn something from it, but it's intellectually dishonest, yeah. I feel. I think he was just out to write a book that, it reminds me of when I talked to the writer, Ron Goulart, the science fiction mm -hmm. writer who wrote this book, The Assault on Childhood, 30, 40 years ago before he was writing, writing any comics. And, and I asked him, why did you put in stuff like calling Starenko's thing like junky stormtrooper entertainment? He says, well, the publisher felt I had to put in a little more sensationalistic stuff if he was going to do it. I said, well, that's no reason to be right. if that's, that's just dishonest, you know. Exactly. I never had, to, I mean, I had to, there were things I couldn't say when I'm writing books that Stan has to officially approve, like the two Toshin books, because, you know, officially Marvel and Stan have to approve them. So, anything I, you know, it's not like I could, if anything I write, I could write anything I want to. So, it's different from, say, Danny Fingeroff's book or sure. Reisman's book or Rice's book or whatever. But, you know, I've got a, you know, but at least I didn't have to put in anything that I really thought was wrong. If they'd come to me and said, you got to write this and that, I just said, go shove it, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't get paid that much for those things. You know? uh, I couldn't say everything I wanted to, but I did. I pushed the, the most that I could, you know, and, and everything. And Because whenever I did get pushed back by a company, like when DC Comics made me take references to Bill Finger out of the introduction I wrote to, to the World War II Batman stories about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I, you know, two weeks before they started giving me credit, you know, it, it, it angered me, I yeah, didn't, sure. you know, and so forth, because I, because it made it look like I didn't know who Bill Finger was and everything, and I certainly did, you know. Right. And my very last question, because I know we uh, got to yeah. get you uh, yeah. to the convention. When, with Star Wars, you were integral in having that brought over to Star Wars, and some people mm -hmm. say that saved Marvel at the time financially. So the funny thing is, Jim Shooter says it, and he's no great fan of mine. So, <laughs> yeah, I, but, uh, yeah, I didn't know it, though. You know, I was just doing it because I thought it might be a fun thing, and it turned out wasn't as much fun for me, so, but, yeah. <laughs> Howard yeah. Shaken's not a huge fan of Star Wars either. No, so. I, I but, actually <laughs> do like that first couple of movies. After that, I kind of cooled off on it, but I think they were great. And they, yeah. they led to the Superman and the Marvel movies. So, you know, and George Lucas was, even if he didn't like my Green Rabbit, he was a, a, a <laughs> I, I think he was a real, you know, a real visionary, and I think he contributed a lot of really good stuff to, uh, he should have paid me some a bonus. But well, other than that, George is okay. George is good people. Perfect. Uh, Roy Thomas, this has been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for your time yeah. today. Sorry we had so short time, but I have to get there and, you know, they, they want me to sign the stuff, and I want to make some money, so we got to I don't go. blame you, and I'll be over there to have you sign some stuff. <laughs> okay, so thanks very much for your time. I'm sorry we couldn't talk longer. No problem. Bye, thanks bye. very much. Always great to sit down with a legend like that. So many other questions I had for him, but obviously in a limited amount of time, uh, it's always great to be able to ask the questions of him that I was able to ask. But a lot of those topics I would have liked to have delved deeper into. Um, I just was thinking about, we're coming up on our 300th show here pretty soon. If uh, you know 300, 200 was Alan Burnett. Joey Joey thought we were only done two. It probably seems like probably more because Joey's had to put up with me all this time. But yes, 300. Uh, so make sure you go online because if you check out geektomeradio.com, we had to put out content that we didn't have time to get out on the air every week. So my last show we just did was uh, New York Times bestselling author Brad Meltzer talking about his new book, The Lightning Rod. And of course, the only man to direct five James Bond movies in a row, John Glenn. Those were two great interviews. That's up online at geekmeradio.com. We're going to take our next commercial break. We're going to come right back and chat with artist Patrick Reynolds about his brand new comic coming out this Wednesday, Bloodstained Teeth from Image. Please stand by. Up to the rescue. Oh no, I'm stuck. Don't worry, tow truck's here. Wow, that's power. Yeah, they're power movers. Fire truck, hauler, and tow truck, each sold separately. Power movers, new from Cat. My little pony, waterfall. I always bathe my little pony there. My little pony, waterfall. I love to shampoo her pretty hair. My little pony, waterfall. My Little Pony Waterfall comes with My Little Pony Sprinkles from Hasbro. We're the Kidmonks. Out in Simon Theodore, rise and shine. Oh, your concert was fantastic, but don't be late for the baseball game. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore each sold separately. Cowboy and baseball outfits also sold separately. Neither I won't get up. Anybody seen my vest? Alvin, 
The Chipmunks, Alvin, and Simon, and Theodore each sold separately. Other outfits also sold separately from Ideal. Here's the new Barbie Dream Kitchen. You put it together. Day to night Barbie sold separately. It smells like cookies. We girls cook up a great party. Right, Barbie? Dream. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Hi, everybody. This is James Masters with his sexy, fake British accent. You're listening to geek to me Radio. Welcome back to the show. geek to me Radio, our official comic book sponsor here at geek to me Radio is Bugs Comics and Games. If you go to the website, BugsComicsAndGames.com, you can find all their selection of uh, back issues, variants, whatever you might want to get. Obviously, it's always important to support small businesses, the brick-and-mortar stores. I love going to the comic book store every Wednesday. And if you're looking for a new place to get your comics, maybe you're thinking about getting back into the hobby, go check out Bugs right there on Bryan Road in O'Fallon. Uh, easily accessible from either Highway 70 or the uh, new page extension, as they call it, Highway 40, uh, as it comes out past that part. And you can go off right there on Brian Road. He's been open since October, and it's it's always fun to see. Like he'll he he buys collections too. I should let me start there. If you're looking to sell your collection, talk to Larry or Tim at Bugs Comics, and they can uh, help you out with that either through consignment or if you just want to sell it outright. But he's always got new stuff every time I go in there. I'll go through his back issues, and then I'll go in two weeks later. He's got a brand new box of two dollar comics out that I didn't even know he had last time. But uh, so there's always something new if you haven't been there lately. You'll find something there. And, if, of course, if you're wanting to get back into buying comics, I know with the prices going up and everything else, it's kind of hard with the inflation taking hold. You need some where you can get a discount. Bugs Comics has their Avengers Club. You join that and you start saving money on your new issues, your back issues, your games, your toys, whatever it is, your supplies. And that's a great way to save some money, too. If you give their Facebook page a like, I know they'd appreciate that. Bugs Comics and Games on Facebook. And make sure you check out the store. Buy online or go by and see them if you're in the greater St. Louis, St. Charles area, right there on Brian Road. BugsComicsAndGames.com. Again, the website, very proud to have them as our official comic book sponsor here. And as we talk about comic books, this is perfect because coming out this Wednesday is a brand new comic from Image Comics, Bloodstained Teeth, uh, from Christian Ward and my next guest, artist Patrick Reynolds is on the line with us right now. Patrick, how are you? Hi, how are you? Um, this is actually my first live interview, so me attempting to think and speak on my feet is going to be probably hilarious and terrifying for everybody. So, thank you. Well, this is I, I appreciate your being on and uh, talking about. Uh, it seems like vampire comics are always fun. There's uh, we've got you know, uh, it seems like they have a resurgence. They kind of ebb and flow, but vampires are once again we're seeing like more stuff. <clears throat> and I love this idea of bloodstained teeth. Uh, I'm just going to re read the synopsis real quick. Atticus Sloan, misanthrope criminal vampire lives in a world where blood isn't the only thing vamps crave and the right price he'll make you a vampire too after all immortality isn't cheap it sounds like a, a very interesting topic talk a little bit about doing the art on this particular one. Oh, well it's uh like you said there's a lot of like different vampire stories out there and and uh, i think the thing that makes us uh, our story uh christian warden may have developed unique is the fact that um not only is it about um, uh, uh, not only is it about like vampires, but uh, uh, money off, off of buying people. But I think the fact that um, uh, the, the you think of Christian Ward's artwork, you think of like his work that kind of speaks to the cosmos, right? It's stuff that like you can see. Uh, you imagine like um, came from Thor Ragnar or something, something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's just this psychedelic um, uh, cosmic. Uh, a narrative and it's it's sort of and my work is really kind of street level and kind of noir and gritty and the idea that these two kinds of approaches come together to make like a horror comic I think is what makes everything sort of unique and um, I was really surprised when Christian actually came and um, looked me up uh, uh, a private message on Twitter and asked me if I wanted to kind of vampire comic with him I'm like uh yeah, I mean, we're going to have our comic with Christian words like, you know, having chocolate and peanut butter at the same time, <laughs> you know, and uh, he said he, wa he wanted to do a little differently. He was thinking of having it be kind of the, um, uh, different than any vampire, com vampire comic or even story that's out there. 
And uh, at that point, I just said, well, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. He said, what I wanted to do, I wanted to use your style because it's more realistic. But I also wanted to do, um, make it so that uh, there's, there's some, something experimental about it. And he, that's what he brought up uh, colorist Heather Moore, who I had not heard of before, uh, doing Blood, Stain, Teeth. And uh, she um, uh, showed some like, examples of uh, patterns that she wanted to add to the color, but I, I still didn't quite know uh, what uh, Christian meant by experimental, right? So, um, uh, and then when I first saw her colors on the, uh, the inks that I did, I imagine it was probably similar to how watching Jimi Hendrix play the Star Spangled Banner stock <laughs> the first time. It's just. You know, like, it looks like it's familiar, but it, it kind of it has its own meaning now. And it, it's on top of, like, uh, which is more realistic. And so it has this um, different, has these different level, uh, the, the, the colors become like a character in and of themselves on top of, you know, um, uh, work, uh, imagery that's more and more realistic. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I didn't, uh, and first of all, you know, I, I was, it took me a minute to process this. <laughs> You know, like the first time, you know, when you see like a Pete Floyd concert, it probably takes a minute to process it. But once you get locked into what the story, the music, and the comic is trying to tell you, it becomes something you've never seen before. It becomes uh, something that you're in the back of your head. You know, it, there's, there's a haunting element to it. And that's sort of, whenever I do comics at all, like the reason why I approach things realistically is because I want people to. I want to immerse the reader in the believ- believability of the story. And I think that helps uh, the reader engage. But also, I think using you know, real people as models and that kind of thing, I, I want to be able to uh, tell the story using the characters' faces. And I want, um, uh, people, I, I want people to engage with them that way. So um, uh, that's... That, that's what I was, what I was uh, when, I, when I was first approached this. I thought, oh, well, you know, I have a, I have a certain way I, I draw comics and Christian. Well, yeah, well, he, that's what he was looking for. But I think like the thing that makes our comic unique is that tension between the realism and the experimentalism. And uh, then you have on uh, top of Christian word story, which is a very unique way of thinking about vampires. Right. And I think it, I think it's really I, I think it's really something that. Um, uh, uh, it's going to be really engaging. You know, I think it's like, you know, we're, uh, we're talking about vampires as, um, you know, not only people who drink blood, but also, you know, they accumulate money. They accumulate, you know, um, information, you know, and that kind of thing. And it's like, what I try to do is add a human element to all of that, you know, to make these characters something that people can identify with, people can actually, you know, feel on a, on a visceral level. And I think, you know, there's colors on top of all that, like, really back quite a punch. And so, um, uh, I'm just, this is honestly the most well fulfilling project I've ever done is because I think every, every part, every creator or every member on this team, Heather, Christian, Heather Antos is our editor and, uh, and, and Hassan, um, uh, is uh, doing the letters. They we're all working like, like a jazz quartet. You know, we all have our moments that we, we have our, um, things, that we're good at doing, but it all come, becomes part of the whole. And the important part is is the whole. And if you take one thing away from it, you know, it wouldn't have the same impact. But we're all kind of operating on a, on a, on a level of, like, uh, of, of making a whole experience. So uh, that's what makes it unique and really fulfilling to me. And I know this is the 30th anniversary of Image Comics this year, uh, so it's got to be a great time to be launching a brand new title with this this uh, this 30 year anniversary thing. I would think you're probably getting a lot of support from Image too, with uh, being a brand new title in their stable and having uh, this be the 30th anniversary of the company itself. Yeah, I they they made a, they came up with this great promotional video and it blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, for comics as a movie trailer. I mean, I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> but, it, you know, I've, I've you know, spent most of my career working for Dark Horse Comics um, up until um, working on Blood Saints. I've worked on Aliens and Hellboy and Serenity. And all of these things were these great license titles and everything like that. And um, uh, it's, it, was, it was, the thing with it makes it unique is that you're sort of, 
um, are in charge of uh, your own marketing and promotion up to a point. Um, but like the the marketing and, and the promotion for this is, is really kind of mind blowing. Like I've never had a response, <laughs> you know, like people saying like, you know, I want to alt retail variants. Like, are you do want twenty seven of the same? I'm not giving it this one my mind. You know, uh, but the fact that you know people are just interested is um, it's a little bit bit surreal. But then again, I'm thinking like, okay, you know, my my goal have people identify with these characters and to have these characters resonate with people and it works, <laughs> you know, and, you know, uh, it all starts of course with Christian story, but the fact that you know people are responding the way they are is, is, um, it's, it's, it's a bit weird, but it's also, it means that, you know, we're doing something right. <laughs> you know, that We're doing something, um, that people want to read. And I, I really appreciate the work that image comics is doing by um, doing these, they had these little teaser character promos mm-hmm. um, that were you know, designed by Christian and Hassan, um, and uh, and they would fit, they would tease them out every, uh, once uh, once a week and that kind of thing and sort of build the buzz that way. But you know, this gosh, it's 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 weird. Like I never really thought that I would do a comic that would get a response like this, <laughs> and I'm really grateful that it has. You know, and it's, um, uh, at, at this point, you know, this is sort of like why I. 10, 12 hours a day for, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even sometimes, sometimes longer, you know, um, it's, you know, and I, I won't, I won't go into how long because it's kind of embarrassing how much time I spent <laughs> working on these pages, but, you know, but it, this is what makes it worth it. You know, when you go to conventions and meet fans that read your comics, that also, that's you realize, oh, you know, I don't do stuff anymore. People actually are connected to this stuff. And that's when it becomes really, really super cool. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I know that's kind of a rambling answer. But, no, um, that's, uh, that's yeah. perfect. That's a great answer. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, like I said, the, the, this character is going to appeal to a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Um, I, I got a couple more questions. I want to take another quick commercial break. You're okay to stick with us for a little longer? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to artist Patrick Reynolds about the brand new comic from Image, Bloodstained Teeth, that's coming out this Wednesday, so you can add it to your pull lists very quickly or just make sure you get out to the store first thing in the morning Wednesday and catch one of the issues. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come right back and chat more with Patrick after this. Please stand by. <gasps> Barbie wants red. Beautiful. <laughs> Barbie Beauty Salon, styling and streaking are specialty. The Barbie Beauty Salon, with two hair streaking ones, play shampoo, and all this. Barbie sold separately. Ooh, from a- the, the only thing more exciting than Turbo Hopper is Aero Turbo Hopper. The hottest off road action you've ever seen. It leaps into the air because its radio control go anywhere, do anything. Fun and speed. Yahoo! Over rocks and through the mud. Real turbo race in action. You just hit the turbo power to make the pass and win. Aero Turbo Hopper and Turbo Hopper. Only from Tyco RC. It's Kenner's Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven. Preheat 15 minutes, light bulb not included. You can mix up a yellow and a chocolate cake. You can have lots of fun with an easy bake. Just ten minutes, it's done just right to frost, share, taste, bite. The Betty Crocker Easy Bake Mini Wave Oven with Betty Crocker Mixes from Kenner. Keycock collection, each sold separately. We make them look flashy, but you make them run fast. The key to speed fast. Fast. The key to speed fast. Burning key cars. Cars with the key to speed fast. Burning key cars, each sold separately with a keychain from Kidco. Switch on Charger Tron, robots like you've never seen. Switch on Charger Tron, supersonic machines. Rev the meter till it's red. Launch out the tracker. Switch on Charger Tron, now it's an attacker. Switch on Charger Tron, always changing, rearranging. He's surprising. He's disguising. Charger Tron. Charger Tron. There's Protagatron and Antagatron. He's so separate. 
Hi, everybody. This is John Machida Jr., Terrible Testaverde, the Micro Machine Man, also known as Blar. I just want to let you know that you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. We are back. This segment brought to you by our official movie sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Make sure you check out their website, MarcusTheaters.com. And if you're looking to go out and see the Batman, like Joey just did, my executive producer finally saw Batman. And Outdoors Dan last hour just saw the Batman as well. If you haven't seen Morbius yet, if you haven't seen any everything everywhere all the time, lots of great movies to be seen in theaters. And the best place to do it is at a Marcus Theaters or Movie Tavern. If you can go to their website, you'll find the location closest to you. You can buy your tickets right there on the website. And, of course, make sure you join their Magical Movie Rewards program that you start getting points towards future movies and future concessions with every movie movie and concession you buy if you're like me and you always get the big popcorn when you go and the gigantic fountain soda show your magical movie points and you'll get you know rewards for that purchase that'll go towards future purchases at a marcus or movie tavern it's always a great time to see movies like today was rainy great time to go see movies later on the summer it's really hot great time to go see movie so there's never a bad time in my personal opinion but i'm a movie guy as anyone who knows me will attest and the best place to see it is at your local Marcus Theaters. Marcus Theaters and Movie Tavern. Once again, go to the website, marcustheaters.com, for the best movie-going experience in the galaxy. The hour is quickly flying by. We're wrapping it up here, talking with artist Patrick Reynolds about his new comic book out this Wednesday, Bloodstained Teeth. Before we let you go there, or I, on the last break, I should say, before we went to the last break, Patrick, um, I was looking at the website on Image Comics, and they've got release dates for the first four issues. Is this just a four-issue limited series for now with the potential to go further, or would it restart as a brand-new series after these four? Uh, it's, um, yeah, right now it's uh, scheduled to be 10 issues. Um, so okay. uh, we're actually just finishing up issue number seven. Um, but uh, <laughs> that, that's because I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not the best in the world, so I kind of need to be a handle a credit. So... Yeah, there will, there will be a lot of a uh, lot more issues for four, um, and we're really excited to have everybody kind of delve into uh, the world of Sloan and, and Blood Thank You and as the world expands. Um, uh, the issue I'm working on right now it goes to some pretty crazy places, and uh, it's really <laughs> it's one of the things that makes this fulfilling is because it can go so many places, and because there's so many new characters that you're, you'll find out as the issue goes along. And, if you're, and I, I can imagine this this character Atticus Sloan sounds like it, it's it's I always compare things that sound cool to things that are already in my wheelhouse so I can kind of like make the comparison. Yeah. But there's a little bit of terror ink uh, from D.G. Chichester and that whole universe. It seems like these this kind of, you know, I don't do favors. I, I acquire debt. You know, I accumulate debts from other people. Yeah. But it's very yeah. much that kind of attitude that uh, just from what I'm seeing that I love about this character already. Yeah, it, it's, our character is, I mean, he's, he's kind of a, he's, I would say that, you know, he, he's like, um, we designed him, I want it to land, I, we kind of landed me, uh, Lucifer from the design and did boy in his cinema Duke's face. Uh, that's sort of the basis for what he looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his, um, his whole this is like he wants to appear to be cool, but he's not really, so he's kind of cosplay as a cool person. So he's wearing like, uh, David Bowie seems to kind of don't really fit uh, <laughs> the, the people that are kind of around him now. Uh, but, you know, I think that at, at Attic Sloan, of course, he's really kind of, you know, he's a loner. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's sort of, he's a vampire, of course, with a human. And you know, the, uh, uh, what he does is, is down upon from the uh, camp of the vampires that are sort of in charge of everything. He doesn't belong anywhere. And the character uh, that sort of um, the only really character friend he has is Joey, and he sort of Joey becomes his conscience and sort of represents like the best thing about uh, Atticus, uh, the best thing that can be uh, uh, the potential Atticus, Atticus can be, and he's sort of like a, like a Jimmy Cricket character. <laughs> but um, uh, as the story goes on, the relationship becomes very, very important, you know, and. Uh, even though Attica Sloan is sort of a misanthropic kind of a bastard, Boy Deacons, you know, makes him realize that he can still choose to be a good person. Hmm. He can still choose to not be a monster. And it's that central relationship I think, that um, makes this really resonant on an emotional level. Too. And, you know, it's, it's got these, you know, really great flashes. It's got a great visual style, but also it's 
a great emotional core to it, you know, which is something that you know, I'm trying to make sure that the characters uh, show on their faces and in their interactions and how they, how they carry themselves and how they walk, how they interact with the characters. I hope I'm tr- trying to do my best to make sure everybody still feels all of those things while they're looking at these beautiful colors by other more fluttering <laughs> the house on everything. So, yes. Yeah, just from what I've seen, I'm very excited for everyone else to see this. And again, if you're listening, new comic book day every Wednesday. Of course, we recommend Bugs Comics and Games, uh, but you can also order it and get it if you're not if you don't have a local comic book shop close to you. You can order it online. Uh, that uh, the first one comes out this coming Wednesday, April 27th, and then each uh, month from there, May 25th is the release date for ep- issue two. I almost said episode, and June 22nd for issue three. And then July 20th is as far as I see for uh, issue four. But obviously, like uh, like Patrick just said, they're already working on issue seven. So it'll be fun to see the journey of Atticus Sloan as this goes along. Uh, where can people find you online, social media handles and websites for you if people want to keep up with you and your work? Oh, my gosh. Um, my, uh, uh, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram, of course. And is, um, I, do, I do not say it properly. I don't have a K on the end of my name. <laughs> So um, I am on Instagram as uh, Patrick uh, underscore J underscore Reynolds. Um, or you can, just, you can just type in Patrick Reynolds and find me. And I'm, it's the same. Uh, if you just search my name on Twitter, you'll find me. So, um, uh, and uh, so, yeah, just, just uh, Facebook on my website. It's called murderinginc.com. And people can check that out, too, if, if, uh, if they want to. Very cool. Uh, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much for taking time on a Sunday to chat with us about this new project. Hopefully, I'll come across you at a convention. Real, actually, let me ask you that. Do you have any upcoming conventions that you're, do you know you're going to be doing here in the next six months or so? Uh, yes, I'll be at Rose City Con here in Portland. Okay. Um, that is the first week of September. Um, so it's nice because it's basically in the backyard, and I don't have to pay for a or anything like that. <laughs> Just wake up and like be at a convention. So. Um, there and um, I think that'll be it for right now. Um, my, um, uh, I'm, re- I'm actually a little really busy just drawing this comic still. Sure. So, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, Rose City is is my favorite show of all time, um, and uh, Emerald City are probably my six favorites. So yeah. I've not made it to the West Coast, but that's definitely something I'd like to do uh, so that, that maybe I can show up at one of those with the first four issues at least in hand by September. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be awesome. I would, I would gladly sign up for you and do a, you know, and if, you, if you're the karaoke, I would love to, I could sing karaoke with you, too. Perfect. Fan of Tina Turner. <laughs> oh, great. I was so. say, I'm, I'm, I'm a karaoke maniac, so this would work out perfectly. <laughs> oh, was accepted. Perfect. <laughs> Patrick Reynolds, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Continued success to you, and hopefully we can have you back on uh, talking about the later issues, maybe. Well, I would love that. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Be well. Take care. There he goes, Patrick Reynolds. Make sure you check out Bloodstained Teeth. Uh, thanks also to Roy Thomas, a uh, huge fan of his work. He's a f- just a, a huge legend in the comic book industry, and now we're seeing Moon Knight and Morbius and all these great properties that he helped work on and create being brought to life. That's going to do it. Another show in the books. Thank you, as always, to Joey V, who makes the video that you guys are all watching and uh, makes the show sound as good as it does. Max on Movies is next, so make sure you stay tuned here on The Big 550. And until next week, my friends. It's not in the way you watch I sound. Good night.